Uh, okay, so let's start off with Victoria. Uh, oh, and uh, quick mention of uh, the main action podcast's uh, preview for Victoria Glassfire uh, and her and her precon. Um, so they did. They reviewed the. Um, they reviewed Victoria Glassfire, and they're going to be uh, putting out the uh, review preview of uh, Leo this week, right? This week, Wednesday. Um, so we figured we'd try to, uh, you know, get ahead of the game and just completely do better than they are doing. Well, video format. Video it's format, smart. yep. Uh, live. Yep. So you get to see all the Bye. mistakes. Uh, you get to see and hear no all of our uh, ums and uhs and awkward silences. <laughs> uh, and so then those guys are jerks, man. Just played yeah. a game with Christian, and I was he was like, "You should just attack with everything. You know, it's a, you can do a lot of damage." I'm like, "Oh, okay, yeah, you're right. I'll do it." And he's like, "Oh, change psyche on my." My raven that's amplified with like three charm on it. Swing, change psyche again. Uh, you jerk. <laughs> <laughs> I trust those guys. Can't trust those guys. Even in a friendly match, they try to trick you. So if Christian, if you're at a tournament with Christian, he says, "Swing in, guys. It's, you should do a lot of damage there. Don't listen to him." <laughs> or in a casual match, or anywhere. They're liars, <laughs> and they're Liar. also. Any card that they say is bad, it's, they're just lying to you so you don't play it. Yeah. We disagree. Here, here yeah. we go. Here we go. Colin, this is for you. We disagree with everything you said in your Victoria yes. preview. Figures in the Fog is the best card that's ever been printed in Ashes. Best card. You, Eevee. Not expensive at all. <laughs> does everything you want it to do. <laughs> and then some... All right, so <laughs> <laughs> Victoria Glassfire, Phoenix born of Smogboro. Smogboro? Smogboro. <clears throat> Battlefield 5, Spellboard 4, Life 18, Shadow Spring, side action, uh, wolf power or uh, illusion power. Select two dice in your exhausted pool and place them into your active pool on a side of your choice. So. Uh, you have definitely played a lot of Victoria. What do you think? Uh, she's, she's okay, I guess. <laughs> yeah? I, really, I like she's her a lot. Right. I like her a lot. <laughs> good. She's really good. Uh, that ability is very strong, obviously. Um, you have 11 dice. So, yeah, it's, it's quite good. And it also lets you kind of shift around your colors because you take any two dice back. Yeah. So... Yeah, it's I'd, quick. I'd definitely say that playing against, um, oh, I guess there's, uh, I've got, like, connection problems. Well, your mic was breaking up a little bit, but. Oh, was it? Mm, just sounds kind of robotic. Does it still sound robotic or no? A little bit, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, let's see. I don't know what I can do about that. Stop being a robot. I know, right? Um. All right, let me, let's see. Yeah, let oh yeah, it looks like your stream is stopping and starting again and again. All right, let me uh, let me try something. Hold on, I'm gonna stop it for a second. I know what it is. Main what? action sabotage. That's right. We were moving on from illusionary cycle. Um, yes. Yes. 
We were moving on from okay. Legendary Cycle. So we said Legendary Cycle. Sweet card. Right? Oh, we can just throw these in this bags. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so, so next card, Flash Archer, Flash Archer, yes, uh, well, I'm just making sure, um, that make sure that it's working, yeah. Okay, it looks so great. Um, so yeah, Flash Archer. Well, see, I'll I'll let you I'll let you take the hit the wheel on this one. Uh, all right. So guys, it's a it's a really really good card. Four attack. That's huge. That's Hammer Knight status, right? Four attack. Two recover. Two recover. Two recover. That's amazing. All right. All for the low, low price of two illusion dice, two class uh, illusion, and two basic. Right? And not only that, but side action. Uh, if you use the side action, you don't even get to attack with it. And that's, that's perfect because you don't want to attack with it, right? You want to use <laughs> double shot. Main action, flash archer. Side action, deal one damage to a target unit, then deal another damage to a different target unit. And that right there could kill two one ones or two, uh, two shadow spirits that haven't been... Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Focused yet. Man, that horse that horse is dead. You can stop feeding it. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, the the problem with this card is it's two life. Um four dice, two life. Nah it's that it's that's pretty awful trade. Uh it can be ice trapped, so like worst case is you pay four dice and they ice trap it for one. Um that's really bad. Now that being said, you're probably going to try to play around that. You know, try to bait that ice trap on something else and then play the flash archer. So let's say you do that. Let's say you get the better of your opponent. You play around that ice trap. You drop the flash archer. It still only has two life. Um, if you use double shot, you're not going to get to attack with it. Uh, if you attack with it, it's probably going to die. You, it just doesn't seem like a good trade. <laughs> Very mana. It doesn't seem very mana efficient. No. Um, and even if, even if you try to do something like uh, uh, ex exhaust tricks, um, the likelihood of it surviving after, you know, like, oh, I'm going to steady gaze. Okay, well, now your opponent gets an opportunity to kill it again. Oh, now I'm going to... Uh, um, I don't know, blood chains, uh, something else. All right, well, you know, at that point, you, you've you already spent uh, six, five to six dice just to try to get the Flash Archer to go through to the opponent. So it's really not, it's really not worth it. Yeah, I just can't see. I mean, even if you're like, okay, I drop the flash archer and I root armor it. Like boom, now I have a four four with two recover. Right. Yeah, but you spent half of your dice for the turn to do that. Um just not a good trade. Really not. Fear ruins your day. Blood chains ruins your day. Bears ruin your a lot of things ruin your day. <laughs> Banana birds ruin your day. A lot of things ruin your day. It's not a fan of it. Finch ruins your day. Yeah, yeah. A, a lot of things. Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. 
spirit burn range of Brennan. I mean, fire archer, like a chain of revenge, fire archer type of thing. That there's a lot of stuff. I mean, gilder ping, frog ping. Now, EV is different, so you don't have to worry about that as much anymore. But still, that it's that four dice commitment. It's just tough. I'll also add on. It's the it's definitely the uh, four dice commitment along with the two life. Um, yeah, that's that's probably the biggest uh, biggest thing that so makes she, it so hard. She will cost one fewer basic die. Now all of a sudden, is this a unit you consider playing? Maybe. Like I got one fewer basic die, I can see it in Rin. I can be like, "Ooh, this, I can make this work in Rin," sort of thing with the ice buff. Now I play pay three for a four three two. Mm -hmm. That's I mean that's Hammer Knight stats better almost. So uh, WKU fan says uh, I don't think Victoria really needs to be mana efficient. Um, I mean none of the none of the Phoenix born really need to be mana efficient. Well, you want to be mana efficient, first of all. But uh, if you're talking about like oh, using illusionary cycle and using hidden power and trying to get like more than um, than the eleven dice that you can get with uh, Victoria, yes, that isn't really necessary. Um, however, but you can use those dice for other things right. that are. Like you put you put out a flash archer and you've already spent four of your eleven dice. Uh, if you're if you don't really want to be mana efficient, you've spent four of your um, eleven dice, and then they could just spend one die to kill it. You know, with yeah. Aradel or with um, <coughs> once again going through all the things that uh, Eric was saying. Like, for four dice, I mean, in those colors, it's tough to do as much for four dice, I guess. I don't know. I mean, things that you can do with four dice are, like, put out two Gilder books and then tap two Gilders. You can put out, um, you could actually, for four dice, you can drop a memories, drop a Shadow Spirit book, drop a second Shadow Spirit book, and summon two Shadow Spirits. Yeah. And you have two two twos, and you can summon two two twos every round for a die each. Like, there's a lot of value there for four dice. There just isn't the value here for Flash Archer. Once the Flash Archer is dead, all that, that's gone. Yeah. All those dice you spend are gone. And, uh, I mean, you could even, uh, you could even steady, if you if you want to do another, like, um, stay in colors situation, you could steady gaze for four dice. Two, two creatures, two units for four dice. Um, and that locks them out two rounds. Yeah, this just a lot. You have the the problem is that there's just better things to spend your four dice on, and that's why you don't play this unit. Yep. Uh, especially because it can get ice trapped, and then it can just die so easily. Um, it's just four dice is tough. Four dice is a lot of dice to spend. It is one card. That's why you don't see Blood Archer played uh, very often. Um. I mean, in terms of stats, Blood Archer is pretty solid. Actually, it's kind of like this, another Archer. Blood Archer is, I mean, 3-3 three, three with 2 Recover, and it has an awesome, has battle advantage. It has an awesome ability that gets 2 more attack, but it costs 4 dice. That's why people aren't playing it. It's just too expensive. And Blood Archer can't even get Ice Trapped, but people still don't play Blood Archer. Um, you can't even get Ice Trapped. And I mean, some of that goes into the fact that it's in... Sari Charm and maybe you don't play as much Sari Charm, but it's it's just not it's tough. It's tough to invest four dice, which is over a third of your mana for a round. Yeah, all into one unit, to one card, one card, and it's an ally card, meaning that once it's dead, gone for the moment. Now, do you have other stuff? I mean, there's also um, there's also the fact that you know if you're playing illusion ceremonial, you know you're you're not gonna want to take that flash archer back as well. You know if it dies, 
uh, any way, anyhow, you know, you, there are certain, um, points where maybe ceremonial dyeing a, um, uh, hammer knight might be useful. Um, especially you have, if you have the advantage, um, and you just really need, you know, another unit to, to put more pressure on. But with Flash Archer, you, if you take that back, that's, it's just going to, you're essentially just going to be taking four damage and not, you're not really going to do anything with it. It's just, yeah, it's just going to die most of the time or... I mean, the best case you can hope for usually. I think, like, if you can spend four dice and it doesn't get ice trapped, and you can double shot something, and then your opponent has to spend two dice to kill it, is it terrible? Like, no, you spent four dice to essentially exhaust two of your opponent's dice and deal two damage. It's not terrible, but it's also not good. It's stuff that you could have done anyway with just regular dice powers. Yeah. So that's that's my that's my beef with it. I think we're eat this one to death. Nope. Oh, oh boy. All right. Oh boy. Yeah. Oh boy. Let's talk uh Double whammy. Let's talk body inversion in onto a flash archer. How about that? <laughs> Yeah. Right? Six, six dice. dice. Six dice to have a 2-4 that can do 2 two, extra, two damage. Six no. dice. <laughs> um, I will say that Papa Pratt did bring up a very good point in the uh, main action podcast. Uh, body inversion can be used uh, against against something to essentially neuter them if they have, you know, more life uh, than they do. Or, um, yeah. yeah, than they do yeah. attack. But you know what costs exactly the same and does neutering as well? Steady gazed, and it's not a situation at all. That's true. Um, In fact, steady gaze doesn't remove the unit, which I think is even better because that clogs up a battlefield slot. Um, yeah, that is true. Um, but he did. Th- it was something that I never really thought of with body inversion. Um, you know, like if uh, I just don't. Yeah, I don't see the efficiency in this card. I just don't yeah. see it. Um, I tr- I tried playing with it once just to just to see what I thought, and I had the same issue with it that I did with Black Cloud the first time I tried to play Black Cloud Ninja and I it was that I never wanted to play it. Um, even in situations where it was like this is the best time to play it like if I don't play it now then it tells you that the card's not good because just, I, I just ideal situation for the card I didn't want to play because I'd rather have used my mana for other things and that's what I found the situations I was getting in with Body Inversion just like I was getting into the situations with uh, Black Cloud Ninja. I can see that. So, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan of this card at the moment. Um, yeah, I just don't see the... I don't know what you would do with it. It's the, it, You're giving up a card to do very little. If you play it on an illusion, if you play on an illusion, you're giving up two dice in a card to do very little. Yeah, just well, yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, I really don't know what else to say about body inversion. I, um, creepy ass artwork. It is very creepy artwork. And then as you you kept the shadow hound there to really creep people out. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my gosh. All right. Oh, Figures in the cards in a row. <laughs> uh all right. So 
Well, all right. First of all, I'm just going to say that the way that I ordered it is based off of uh, Plat Hat's um, pre-con order ordering. So blame them, if anything. (laughs) (laughs) That's really bad. Let's just get out there and say this card's really bad. Cost three dice. I like. To I like what it does. Minorly. Yeah. Yeah. It's a cool ability. I like what it does. It's um, it's a very uh, useful. It's a very useful card because you know, like in in this game, at, at least in this meta, um, everybody's going to be attacking. Uh, and it's, it's something that you can choose too. So, um, yeah, but let's get into this a little bit. It's only when you're getting countered. It's not any battle, right? It's a, has to be combat. You initiate, have to get countered, but think of it this way. It costs well, all right. So disregarding the three dice, uh, I this is why I think the effect is awesome. I love the effect of the card uh, because it's it's completely up to you. You know, like you can choose to um, if you attack their um, uh, hammer knight with your hammer knight, right? Um, they're thinking, oh, we'll trade and, you know, like, it'll just, it, it'll be fine. I don't get to take four damage, right? Um, but then what, if you play Figures in the Fog or, you know, that effect, then you're, you essentially get to keep your Hammer Knight and they uh, get rid of theirs. But out of pair for the same dice cost. <laughs> right, exactly. And that, that is the issue is that it is the same exact cost. And uh, also at that point, you're you're going into three different colors too. Um, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Like, and the three different colors is not terrible. The two illusion dice is rough, though. Yeah, it has to be two illusion classes rough. And I do get you're just saying it's a really cool effect. If the effect was on a card that costs less, then you you, you would see it being played, right? Right. I mean, if it was, I, th- I mean. If it was two, uh, if it if it was one illusion power, one illusion class, I wouldn't play it. That's too expensive. That's still too expensive. Yeah, think about it. In the situation you're describing, you're saying, "Okay, I'm gonna swing at my hammer with my hammer knight at their hammer knight," mm-hmm. and they'll say, "They're like, oh, okay, I'll trade," and you kill it. Um, that's best case scenario. What's actually going to happen is you're going to swing with your hammer knight. They're going to look at your dice and say, that figure's in the fog. I'll take it. I'll swing back with hammer knight. We just trade four, four, four damage for four damage. Um, or they're going to say, I'm going to attack with my hammer knight at your hammer knight. And now you have to make the decision because you can't figures in the fog. If I attack, if I initiate the fight, that's true. Um, I mean, with, if you have, Figures in fog. It's you are. Uh, you have to play aggressive. Um, and then, it, because it's a reaction spell, it's sitting in your hand this entire time. You can't do anything with it. Like it's a, it's just a card in your hand that's stuck there, taking up space. True. True. So. It, yeah, that's it's tough. Papa Pratt's right though. Uh nobody really expects um the, the figures in the fog. Figures in the fog play. I don't know if I'd be upset by it though. Again, if they play it, then I say, Okay, well I'll play a bear. You no. Know? Three dice, I'll put out a bear book, summon a bear, and now every round I get to summon another bear for two dice. You killed my hammer knight, but I think I still win that trade because of the mana and the card. What you did with what you do with six dice versus what I did with six dice. So think about it this way. Wouldn't you just be better off 
Molten Golding their Hammer Knight or something like just killing the Hammer Knight with some other spell. Yeah, I mean, that's that's true. Um, and once again, you'd have to... Um, you'd have to think of it in terms of, like, within the same colors. Um, but, at you know, in that same venue, I, I do agree, you know, like, rather than steady figures in the fog, night. you could steady gaze, you could... If you didn't care about um, letting it die, you know, this round... You could technically fade away the Hammer Knight. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess the only thing it does is it is Finch proof. You try to steady gaze, and there's a Finch there. You're gonna fail. But if you swing right. and you figures in the fog, the Finch is gonna decoy block. It's gonna unit guard. So it's not gonna matter. <laughs> <laughs> Well, goodbye, figures in the fog. You're donezo. All right, so let's, uh, yeah, let's go on to, I mean, this one's not too bad of a card, right? Particle shield? No, uh, I don't think it's too bad. Yeah, you may play um, the spell when a unit definitely. you control would receive one or more damage. Um, this is another one that... Uh, well, first of all, you can play uh, you can play this even if you've already played reaction spells, and that means uh, you can play three of them in a row. Yep. Talk about hey, want to know what costs three dice? Boom, my hammer knight's not dead now, but it also costs three cards. You know what that. That is that is true. Like technically, you could just particle shield two, right? Just par particle shield twice, and now uh, you have a living hammer knight versus their dead hammer knight. Unless they you yeah. know, decide to aftershock your. Uh... You have to yeah you have to you have they aftershock your hammer knight, so you'd have to do it like three times. Yeah, you still would need two cards or three car copies of the card in hand, so it's not practical. But, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, I was going to say that this is another card that is shuffled into your draw pile. And so since we have two cards now, well, the only two cards that uh, gets shuffled back in, this one and Illusionary Cycle... Uh, so Papa Pratt did say that he would have rather had a May uh, effect, uh, May shuffle this card into your draw pile uh, for both of them, he even said. And I don't know. I don't think... I think if they did that, a... it would be way too powerful. Yeah. Well, I don't know if it's even necessary, honestly. Yeah? Yeah, I mean... We're getting a little worked up about these shuffle into draw pile, but I think I think when you actually play it, you rarely are you like, oh, my hand's getting flooded with this card. I'm shuffling back into my deck. I like, it doesn't doesn't really happen in practice. Yeah, what happens in practice. This is you. Draw it later. You draw just one copy, so it's not a big deal. You met it off for, uh, yeah, you met it off your deck. It you from being milled out because it's like a, one of the last cards in your deck. That's what ends up happening actually. Um, don't think it's something where you're like, oh man, I keep drawing into this. Now maybe you would have some issue like that if you're running three copies, but. Then doesn't it just basically turn basic dice into uh, illusion power symbols for exhaustion? Essentially, yeah. It it's yeah. I mean, I think it's an okay card. Um, I think it's really good with the change to EV. Violinist changes now that you don't have wounds as easily. People are going to have to deal damage to kill units. Yeah. Um, this is just a surprise card at the end of the day. That's what it is. An opponent commits to killing something and you particle shield and it lives. It has recover. It's going to recover. They're, they're sad. Um, 
It protects one life units pretty well. I think it's really it's like an interesting card to play with widows. Mm -hmm. One of the problems with widows is always you would summon them and then they immediately kill one. And so when you pay two dice for just uh, a single two one unit, it's not great. But if you have a particle shield to protect the widows, now they're a threat. Yeah, that's true. Particle shield to protect a dove. Um, which is super annoying for your opponent. It's interesting. I, it's it's definitely a card that's tough to... I think it's tough to find slots in a deck for it. But it does an interesting thing. Um, the surprise factor is probably the biggest thing. Yeah. I think the um, the fact that they don't know... Uh, that you've got particle shield and then now they're just like and after you've played it they think to themselves now i need to use another die that i've already thought about you know like because because you get all of the mana that you have available they've you know like most opponents will have already uh calculated out all right this is what i'm gonna need um now they have to like reconfigure their dice and change what they need to spend uh, and what they can spend. So, yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, I do think I do still think it's a little tougher to find slots for it, but it's an interesting option. I think it's a I think it's one of those cards you probably I, don't, I haven't played with it yet, so I can't really say. I know you've played with it, see, so you, you know better than I. I think it's a card I would just looking at it, something I would make want one copy of, but not more than one copy. As like a first fly flex option for real surprises. So I've played with uh, uh, I've played with three copies of it, and I I don't know about just having one. I think having two would be uh, a a good amount. Like if you really um, if you want to try out Particle Shield, I I think two is perfect. Three is a little overkill because um, you only really need to. Uh, um, protect that, you know, like basically, uh, get that one extra, uh, die away from your opponent. Interesting. I could see that. Two seems like a good number. Yeah. Um, when I've played with three, I saw myself drawing it, uh, a little too much, um, where I, you know, would have rather had other, other cards. Um, that's not to say that it was a, a dead draw, um, cause you can always use particle shield. Uh, the only problem is that, you know, it doesn't really, it doesn't really help, uh, put more, more units onto your field. Like if you're playing with, uh, an aggressive deck with, uh, bears, you want more bear books. You'd rather have more bear books. Uh, you'd rather have more units. Like if you're going to be unit flooding, um, and that's that's how I I played, too, uh, with it. So secret right. door, secret door. I have yet to play with secret door. Uh, secret door is a ready spell. For one illusion class and one basic, uh, after a reaction spell is played and its effects have been resolved, you may place one exhaustion token on the spell to draw one card or discard this card to take the reaction spell just played from its owner's discard pile and place it in its owner's hand. I, um... Man, I want to use... I'm, like This is a card you see and you're like, oh man, how do I break this card i you're like how can i just abuse this thing right the only thing that comes to mind right like what i really want to do with it but it's very mana hungry is i want to do a secret widows yeah like being able to widows and then pull back widows and then widows again, like threaten the second widows on your opponent is really fun to me because you're like well not the first thing you want to do when someone summons widows is kill one but if you kill one cut off one head two more will grow back in its place sort of thing so it's kind of funny to me to be able to pull that off um it that's kind of expensive though two for widows plus two more for secret door plus two more for widows 
it's definitely a card that you need to be out for a couple of rounds to get value from it. You need to draw from it at least probably twice is the best amount of times. Like, if you draw twice from it, you're satisfied with pitching it after that and grabbing a reaction spell back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's that initial investment is tough to get over. Uh, now I haven't really played, um, uh, with it very much, but, um, for me, I feel like, uh, I feel like it's interesting that it's not only, uh, you know, like a reaction spell that you play, it's a reaction spell that anybody has played. Yeah. So, you know, like you can, um, you can wait until, or if you need an extra card, uh, you don't even have to, you know, like you could wait for your opponent to use a reaction and be able to, uh, essentially fill your hand or, you know, uh, it's yeah. draw engine. And reaction spells are, they're so common in this game. I think you're going to get to draw with this card every round. Right. Um, pretty much. Yeah, if not from yourself, then definitely from your opponent. Right. Yeah, you're gonna. The reaction spells are good in this game. They're strong. You're gonna get to draw from it. And you can also, you know, one thing you you can do with this card is you're like, man, I wish this game would end soon. The sympathy pain you, and you're like, here, take sympathy pain back. (laughs) (laughs) Just finish me off. I don't know. That could be. Right that back. could also be a slap in the face too. Like you know, they have, they use a sympathy pain, and you know, you see that they've used up their uh, last two charm dice, and now you're just like, you know what? I'll give you that sympathy pain back. That's how. That's how. Uh, how much I know that I'm gonna win this round, <laughs> right? <laughs> like. <laughs> Troll. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even need Secret Door anymore. I will give you that sympathy pain back. You're dead <laughs> this round. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I really like the idea of drawing from it. It's just, I don't know, I don't know what you build with this card at the moment. Um, it has to be something that can serve because you need to get it out round one. Yeah. Um, start getting that value from it. The later you play it, the less likely you are to get that value. That's true. Now, um, if, uh, let's say, if, let's say, you use uh, Particle Shield, right? And you have Secret Door, and you want to get that Particle Shield back. Uh, now this is something that I'm, I'm a little, you know, confused about. Do you get that particle shield back or does it, is it something that you can't because it's not going to the you discard can't pile? Because it's not going to your discard pile. Mm, so you okay. can't bring particle shield back. Pretty sure that's the rule because particle shield never actually goes to your discard. Cause you know, particle shield does say discard. On on the does it? Uh, yeah it does the spell or the huh. reaction spell itself does say discard, but um, you have to resolve a spell entirely before you can have any effects interrupt it. So you'd have to ins- resolve all the text on particle shield before you could. Uh, ah okay, it. yeah no that makes sense then. See yeah it says effects have been resolved yeah you'd have to resolve all of the effects first. So you can't do that. Just like you wouldn't be able to secret door to draw. When you get sympathy pain, secret door to draw sympathy pain and then play it as a reaction to sympathy pain. You can't do that because you have to wait for the effects to resolve. Right. The uggo. All right. So there it is. Shadowhound. So it's three illusion, place Shadow Hound on Conjuration in the battlefield. Focus one, you can deal damage to a target unit. Focus two, you may deal one damage to a target unit. So if you get it focused twice, you can deal two pings every time you play one. You you get a better flash archer is what is what happens. Yeah. 
<laughs> you get a better flash archer. And the unit itself is a 3 attack, 5 life. If it receives damage as a result of a unit's attack or counter, destroy it because it has the illusion ability. Um, it's also very disturbing artwork. <laughs> uh, so, <clears throat> this is. A, I played with this card once. Yeah, this is a really. I, I really like this card um, because. You can you can take care of uh, any weenies that might you know uh, that you might not get like full value out of right, uh, and then um, from from attacking like if you attack with Shadowhound and you're facing like you know four weenies on the other side you're most likely not gonna attack, but summoning a Shadowhound you get to pick those off and then hopefully you know get the swing in but um you know on the other hand you also um it's also a really good wall too uh just keeping it there uh because it's a three five chances are you know like they're not going to be able to ping it down and um you can just sit sit on a shadow hound for um uh, i don't know however long it it lasts i guess yeah um it's an interesting card i'm not a fan of it just because the color intensity three illusion is a lot like uh dread wraith is three ceremonial mm -hmm. um and if you have experience playing that you can see that it's it's difficult at times to get it out just because it's so color intensive that's true um that's the only thing I would say about Shadow Hunt is that that color intensity makes it makes it difficult to play sometimes. I did play it though. I played this card once in the game I played it. I um, actually got all three copies out, so I was getting full value for that Shadow Hound. I was able to play one, ping two units down, or ping one unit that's two life down, and have a three five body out. Um, that was fun, but. It was still very color intensive. There were times yeah. where I'm like, oh, I can't really play this because I, I don't have a illusion dice available or if I if I do play this I can't do something else. Yeah, that that was against me. And uh I mean seeing like three shadow hounds on your 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 side was it wasn't troublesome for me. It wasn't like I wasn't worried. But it was really annoying. And I, when I saw you place uh, the third ready spell down, I was just thinking to myself, are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, cool. Get the value from this. Uh, reality is very rarely you're going to get all three copies out, right? right? So best case, you have two copies out. Um, it's, it's very color intensive is all, is all I can say. Yeah. But I mean, it's not a bad... You're right, the 5 life is a solid body. 3 attack is nice. It's just um, hard. It's hard to find the dice. Right. Yeah, I agree. Ooh, we got a good one. So. Some shadow spirit. Summon shadow spirits. Yeah, a little it, box or something in its hand, a little lantern. Yeah, I think it's I think it's the lantern that uh, Vic is carrying. Because Vic is Vic is also carrying a lantern. If you if you look at her art, oh yeah, yeah, she's got a lantern in the other hand, um, while she's saluting in uh, with her uh, left. There we go. Ah, oh, so she does. It's like a mini lantern. It's like the it's like the shadow spirit is saying, "I want to be just like you." Huh. Ah. Right. So, shadow spirit, also an illusion. Uh it it takes a uh power illusion to to bring out um and it is a 
two X zero. Um, the X is based on the number of summoned shadow spirit spells on your spell board. Uh, this is the second X life unit and uh, the first one being summoned butterfly monk. And uh, I mean, the moment, the moment you see it, you just think to yourself, this is going to be just as powerful as butterfly monk because you know, that uh, just being um, one die with uh, X life, it's it's powerful. I mean, it doesn't even matter that it's an illusion because uh, you can you can spam out so much of them. Yeah, you just I mean you see that two attack. You're like one die, two attack. Okay, sounds good so far. Um, and that X life is what brings it home because now now when you can you you start thinking oh if i get two copies out i can pay one die for a two two yeah that's huge it doesn't matter if it has illusion because most of the time something with two life is going to die uh when it attacks something anyway or it gets attacked by something so it's okay um if you're getting attacked by a one attack unit you can just take that on your phoenix board one one is nothing because you can threaten a two attack back um yeah even if you, uh, even if let's say you're you're being attacked, like let's say you're being attacked by a um, uh, one attack two lifer, right? You're essentially trading, and you and you don't want to take the uh, single point of damage. You're essentially trading one die for one die, um, right? So even then, it's got it's got great value because you're going to take out that two lifer. Uh, they'll take you out, but you can just replace it, you know, with a, with another die. This card is very much like Butterfly Monk, where with one copy, it's okay. And with yeah. two copies, it becomes incredible. Yep. And then three copies, it's just, it becomes absurd. Um, just like Butterfly Monk. That's those, those ex-lifers do that. I wonder, so we have an X-Lifer for Illusion and X-Lifer for Nature. They both cost one power die to play. I think we're going to get one for Charm and one for uh, Ceremonial eventually. Probably not, but... Maybe. I can see it. I can see it. Um, I feel like uh, a Ceremonial X-Lifer might be... I have to have a weird ability. Yeah. Probably zero attack and some. Yeah, it's probably going to be zero attack, but like anytime it, it gets hit you can deal uh one damage to an opponent or something anytime it, it takes like uh damage something like right that. yeah that's just something weird like that yeah actually that would be insanely good that would be really good actually yeah <laughs> goodbye living doll <laughs> <laughs> maybe you get status tokens or something i don't know yeah do something with stats yeah but maybe status tokens would be pretty good Actually, the um, the ceremonial one is going to be something that reduces the cost of Iron Rhino. That's what it's going to be. Oh, that, there you go. <laughs> Specifically, just Iron Rhino. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this card's good. I mean, I think the, I think we covered that. It's, this card. Oh, Papa P said that that, that Shadow Spirits was uh, going to be as meta defining as bears oh yes um, um that's a big claim i think it definitely is going to be a very big card as meta defining as bears maybe uh so bears basically says if you're running nature you're running bears does this say if you're running illusion you're running shadow spirits i, I think it does i don't know i don't think um I think Shadow right, Spirit maybe, maybe might, not. I think Shadow Spirit cuz like it's hard it's hard to uh to get that that um uh illusion power, right? Or to keep that illusion power cuz like if you're running if you're running illusion, uh chances are you want to use illusion to exhaust. And if you're using it to exhaust and play Shadow Spirits, I don't know. Well, so, I mean, you've seen me. When I play Vicky, I, I pretty much play uh, I play Shifting Mist. Right. Um, 
almost mandatory with her now, just because if I'm exhausting dice and I want to summon, summon shadow spirits, or even just if I want to exhaust dice, I kind of need to have something to give me those symbols without me milling myself. Right. And so depending on that, depending on the style of Victoria, I usually play Shifting Mist. There's one deck I have that I don't play Shifting Mist, and it's a more aggressive one. Yeah. Um, I think if you're going to play a control game with Victoria, you almost have to have Shifting Mist. Um, it's really tough if you don't, just because um, you're going to deck yourself. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um because you really don't want to be you don't want to be meditating for two reasons you don't want to uh go through your deck and you don't want to meditate away your illusionary cycles by accident like too many of them if you meditate away one that's fine but um i think it really cuts her uh um uh, it makes her really vulnerable when she doesn't have illusionary cycle. So yeah. Yeah. The get out of here. <laughs> All right, let's finish Vicky's cards. All right. Going, okay. One long here for the delays. Let's get through it. Yes. Shadows. Two shadows. Side action. Uh, it's a main action to play. It's a ready spell. Uh, side action, exhaust, and one class illusion. Choose a target unit to gain the following ability. It gains illusion. Uh, um, not, a, not a fan of this card just because the side action cost um, is very limited. I mean, best case, you're like gonna make something else illusion so that you can swing at it with something that you're willing to trade with like if you two shadows a hammer knight and then swing at the hammer knight with a shadow spirit for instance you're like okay let's do this but the phoenix born is probably gonna block it yeah oh that's why i'm not a huge fan of it um it's hard to it's hard to do uh combos with it um Unless you have, you know, an iron worker out and you can, you have the dice for, you know, iron worker uh, and then uh, next turn, two shadows, hypno and attack with some weenie, right? Like that, I feel uh, like that's, hypno is big. what's that? Yeah. And if bypass would be, if there was a unit that had bypass, it could really exploit this ability, this, um. Uh, this card's ability. Yes. Because if you can, if you can take something illusion side action and then attack it, and it, you can't guard, then that unit's dead. Right. Um. You know what you can do? That's kind of fun with this. Is you can side action to shadows a unit, and then main action body inversion, so that you get your dice back from body inversion, <laughs> and uh, one of your opponent's units. Or uh, one of your own, I guess, as well. But on your opponent's units, you can be like, okay, let's so let's go with that um that example you have, where like they have a dread wraith that pop that main action cover. They have a dread wraith. Everybody's got one damage on it because they're trying to make it bigger. You side action to shadows main action body inversion, and the dread wraith's dead, and you spent one illusion die on that, and uh, you got two like wolf die back. Yeah. Um. I think it was uh, Matt Matt Kaza. I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. Uh, anyway, uh, Matt Kaza. Uh, so someone did say on um, the previews, uh, the Plat Hat previews page for it, that Two Shadows is essentially a hypno for weenies, and uh, <clears throat> that is true. Koza, Koza. Uh, yeah, it is hypno for weenies. It's true, but only if your opponent has something you can use it on. So it's a hypno for weenies against decks that run big stuff. Right. Um, 
which at the current moment is, you know, most decks run big things. But I think what we're going to see with this expansion is we're going to have decks that, especially because of the violinist change, you're going to see weenie decks again, guys. Yeah. Um, it's just, you're going to see weenie decks again. And Two Shadows doesn't do anything against a weenie deck. It's actually useless against a weenie deck. Um, Wait. May- Eric, hold yeah. on. Okay. What if... So they're, let's say they're playing Shadow Spirits, and you two shadows okay. their Shadow Spirit. Okay. <laughs> I see what you're saying. <laughs> Double illusion ability. Double it dies illusion. Twice. You actually, yep. there's a ruling actually on this, guys. You can't give a unit an ability that it already <laughs> has, so that's actually not a valid target for two shadows. Um, so yeah, so once again, you know, that... If you if you're facing a Shadow Spirit deck, you're essentially you essentially put a card in your deck that is completely useless. Um, now maybe you say, "Oh, I'm going to run one copy, have a little little mini weenie shadows ability, you know, or a little weenie hypno." Now, what's kind of fun is like Frostfang. You get a buffed up Frostfang, and you you two shadows. Like just needs two attack, just a two attack Frostfang. You uh, you two shadow something, attack with it. It's got a battle advantage. It's gonna kill whatever it hits first. They gotta choose between taking the damage or having their unit die without trading with the Frostfang. It's kind of funny. Battle advantage. I wonder if we see more battle advantage, if like cheap battle advantage, like Frostfang, if two shadows gets better also. Just more battle advantage in general. I can see that. I mean, uh, you know, illusion nature is already a pretty popular uh, combo. Um, so the thing about battle advantage is, like, normally you kill it if you had more enough attack to go over its life. Right. But, like, something like Frostfang, which doesn't have a lot of attack, now, I mean, ideally, the best unit would be a two attack um, battle advantage unit. Because that's a unit that's going to either threaten two damage to the P- Phoenix Born or kill uh, anything right. with two shadows. But then at the same time, like even if you put Frostfang in Mayoni or Frostfang with Strengthen, you know, that three... Now you're, now you're looking at three... Um, uh, damage already so there's really no reason to use two shadows right the three that's what, that's almost. Two is like that yeah yeah um but who knows maybe maybe down the road we'll get some big life units that are a really big problem and two shadows becomes a good option uh if you look at it as a mini hypno it definitely makes a lot more sense yeah. Is that, that is what it becomes. Right. It's just... Two attack is like the sweet spot for something like that. You hit no in one damage, it's not a big... Uh, it's not a big deal. You can hit no in two damage, now you're talking. It's kind of interesting is that with bears, it's not... T- terrible at all since bears only do two damage so all of a sudden a bear kills hammer knight um instead of dealing two damage and then having to freeze it or having to ping it one more it kills hammer knights it kills beast tamers it kills which by the way we're gonna get the beast tamers but two beast tamers trade fantastically with bears um it's yeah it's it's actually really good for bears Wait, am they I don't... am I hearing this right? Is what is Eric gonna be playing to Shadow shadows? Bears. Shadow, Shadow bears. bears. Shadow bears. It's a different kind what? of Shadow Bears, different from the main okay. action Shadow Bears, but different from their Shadow <laughs> Bears. No, I'm not gonna be playing to Shadows. The Shadow Bears is very tempting, um, or not tempting, but very interesting. Not tempting at all. That's why I'm not playing this, <laughs> but it's very interesting. Um, 
Again, a reason I wouldn't play two shadows is because it's kind of narrow-minded in scope. It's a, a deck that does well against one big type. threats like bears and hammer knights. And if you go against decks that don't have that, it's not a, it's a dead card. And there's no way for you to know before that first round that their deck is not that type of deck. Right. Um, you could see ceremonial nature and make the assumption, but that could just as easily be a burning deck, just a d burn deck. Right. It could be a hammer knight deck. There's some Phoenix points where it's obvious. Like, you've seen it in Rin, safe to assume it's probably a big guy deck and you could play it. But in Brennan, you're kind of, you don't know. Aerodel's another one where you, well, Aerodel's probably aggro, but you're not sure either. You can go a couple ways. Jessa is another one where you don't know. Vanish. 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 Reaction spell. Uh, two illusion class dice. You may play this spell when an opponent you uh, would use a spell ability or dice power that targets you, your draw pile, your discard pile, or your phoenix born. Cancel the effects of that spell ability or dice power. Uh, so Vanish is a lot like Golden Veil, except it is, uh, targeting you rather than a unit you control. Control, I'm sorry. Oh. Um. So, yeah. Interesting card. I mean, it's cool. People were complaining that there's no counter to Molten Gold, which is true. Before it was like, if you have three life and they have Molten Gold, you, you lose. Yep. Um. This is an option against Molten Gold now that you have. You don't necessarily lose anymore. Um, I think it's a really cool card that's added to the card pool. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I would personally play it. Uh, it's not It's not one of those cards that you're like, oh, I have to throw in the deck. But it is one of those cards that um, your opponent can't be certain they're going to win anymore with something. Yeah. Um, it's also a good option. Ban it's also a good option against uh, Sympathy Pain. Right, yeah, you can banish Sympathy Pain, Molten yeah. Gold, a, a lot of things, Spirit Burn, um, things that, you know, your opponent thought they were going to win, and all of a sudden it, they don't, and now you can do something else. Um, I think it's going to be, I think this card is actually going to be a great card to have in the pool, especially down the road, when there become uh, more tools yeah. for controlled decks. Um, this is a good card for controlled decks. It's, it's kind of like a counter spell in magic. It's very similar to that and what it does. Though I'm curious how Ash is going to do like a true counter spell. You know, one that something that targets anything that uh, that is, you know, like targeting your side of the field, you, your units, your spell board, whatever. Um, I don't think they will. I think it's going to be a lot of uh, cards like this that that uh, are very are more specific. Yeah. And uh, honestly, what you would need more for control decks is, I don't know if they're gonna do balance effects as much. I think fear is the only one they'll probably ever make. Elliot says it'd have to be a Phoenix Born specific card for a true counter spell. Maybe. I think they'd probably make it really expensive. Yeah. A cool card. Or they'll just That's uh hard. they'll just have the Phoenix Born have really low life. Twelve life. Twelve life. Twelve life. And then you can and their ability is you can counter damage or something every round with that ability. <laughs> yeah. That's kinda of interesting. That's kind of actually an interesting Phoenix Born. Let's finish. Alright. So we've got Auric. Uh Auric is the promo card. Um, the, ex the plaid hat store exclusive card. Um, he, on, let me bring him up on my screen. Uh, he is a Phoenix born of Gobi battlefield five 
19 HP Spellboard 4. So it's also, once again, a, uh, you know, like the Jessa variety um, with one more HP. Uh, Bounty, side action, exhaust, two basic dice, select up to four dice in your exhausted pool. They must be all different types. Reroll them and place them into your active pool. Uh, it's an interesting, it's an interesting, um, side action ability. Uh, the two dice puts him on par with, uh, Daimona in, in that if, you know, like, if she gets choked, she's pretty much just done. And if Bones. Orc gets choked, he pretty much is done. Bones. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's definitely one of those abilities where you see it and you're like, man, this is really cool, but if I get choked, uh, I get screwed pretty hard. Better than Daimona because you're getting more... If you don't get choked, you have 12 dice that turn. Whereas with Daimona, if you don't get choked, maybe you're hitting with something else again. Maybe you're going to owl on it, owl discard again. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe you're going to flash Archer again. Huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's a it's a cool ability. Oh, um, Elliot says that it's a draft all star. This guy, that is very true. Um, in draft mode, only one player is going to be able to grab choke. That's true. Right. That's true. So well, there's you're a possibility. Probably not getting choke in the new draft. Uh, in the way the new draft uh, uh, does things, there's a possibility that another person could get it. Is there a th- right? I thought there was only one set you played with. Because I thought you could essentially hate draft. Uh, like, let's say you're able to get um, a hammer knight. You could, uh, and then you see another. I don't know. There was like something in there that said you you could well, see another hammer did you knight. Read their newest rules? What's the newest draft rules? I just read that the newest draft rules is only one copy of every card. Um, oh, it is just maybe. one. Okay. Cards get- All right. Yeah, some cards get thrown back into the pile, so not every card even gets put into the pool. Ah, uh, okay. All right. So disregard that. Okay. Yeah, so All the right. new format. Yeah, this guy is freaking a rock star in that format because yeah. it's draft. You're probably going to get some awkward colors. You know, maybe you're going to play four colors. And having 12 dice every round is awesome. And you're probably not going to get stopped. So, yeah, I, I, you know what? This guy is probably the king of draft. You know, we have a really, I mean, main action also uh, talked about this a little bit too. We don't really play a lot of draft. I don't know about you, but I've never no. played uh, other than Koloff, which is like, you know, uh, draft for casuals. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I played at Tulsa when they were sort of doing the first draft of this new draft. <laughs> um, that was like the first time I played draft, and it was pretty interesting. Um, I think part of that is because we just got, you know, competitive drafting rules. Yeah. Um, right? They just came out with them. And Gen Con is going to be the first time there's an actual, like, tournament. OP kit draft tournament uh, with the new rules. So I think. You know, I think we might start seeing a lot more draft after that with these new rule sets. Uh, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm tempted to sign up for both draft tournaments at Tulsa just because I, if it's good, I would want to play twice um, and see if it's if it's good. I mean, we're going to see a lot more Ashes draft, which is super exciting because that's going to be a fantastic other way to play. Agreed. Yeah, so yeah, um, we didn't give our thoughts on this guy. I mean, we said he's the king of draft, and oh, we said choke wrecks him. So I guess we did give our thoughts on him. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> oh, so Abra asks. Um, I was wondering about that. When it says different types, does it mean different colored dice or different as in basic, etc.? Uh, yes, it does mean different colored dice. Uh, so. You know, you have the different types, which are um, uh, the uh, illusion, charm. charm, ceremonial, and nature. And then 
when they are referring to uh, the um, basic class or power, then it becomes, uh, they, they refer to them as sides. Yeah, so yep. you have to have four different colors. Usually what that means is you have to have at least two different colors in your exhausted pool, and then you have to spend the other two colors to activate the ability. Um, usually that's what you would end up doing with him. Um, All right. So his unique card is... Yeah, his, uh, his unique card... Oh, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Uh, that's all I was going to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just that he has a unique card? Orc yeah, has a so. unique card. The end. All and right, Gobi's next one. <laughs> <laughs> next card. Let's move on. Uh, go uh, Four basic. Yeah. <laughs> five. Uh, Two, five, three, four basic. And recover three. With alert, do not place an exhaustion token on this unit as a result of its countering. Oh, yeah? Well, what if I figures in the fog? What kind of counter is that now? Oh, no counter. Oh, that's right. Um, the ultimate counter to Gobi Sunshield is figures in the fog. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Actually, the I think the uh, best counter to Gobi is also the best counter to Auric. Choke. Choke. <laughs> um, I mean, this is a solid body. Two attack, five life, three recover. That thing is going to stick around for a while. It does cost four dice, which as we, we said before, four dice is reaching that point where it gets a little difficult to pay for. Yeah. Um, but Oryx's ability is supposed to help mitigate that because he essentially has two extra dice every round. Right. Um, I mean, two attack for five life, free recover. That's a unit is a is a beast. It's it's a beast with that ability too. It still has trouble against bears. It still has trouble against blood chains. Um, the same thing that snakes have trouble against regress. Yep. But uh, um. Frank has also mentioned some pretty good uh, combos with it. Uh, I mean, I say pretty good, but, you know, it's like it's usable. It's um, putting Crystal Shield on Gobi Sun Shield and just uh, blocking and countering for days. Yeah. Six dice, though. <laughs> Six dice. It is fun though. You're like nothing can get through this sun shield. Six dice though. Yeah. <laughs> I have nothing, my biggest fear. Nothing up to seven. Nothing up to seven yeah. damage. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I it's um, you know, like there's a lot of alterations out there that that really benefit uh, with Gobi. Like you could even spiked armor. Yeah, you could even spiked armor, and that would take care of. Go. A Everything. bear. A hammer knight. It would take care of a, a hammer bear. knight. It would take a, care of a bear. One bear. One bear. One that bear. freezes you afterwards. Yep. Um, in the same round. Uh, so. So Sun Shield is another thing about Sun Shield is without any buffs, it, it dies to hammer knights. Um, yep. It does not trade very well with hammer knights no. still. Unless you choke Aftershock. <laughs> The choke games begin. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think that's that's pretty much about it with the sun shield. All right, on to the abs. Absolutely. Well, there's yeah. There you go. Let's just a flower to beg forgiveness. Let's and just a kiss to preface bloodshed. Let's just observe this. For <laughs> uh, please abstain from making ab jokes. <laughs> you know, I'm I'm 
I'm curious who's going to be the one to uh, to come to uh, Gen Con with you know cosplaying as Leo. I I am I think curious. It's gonna be- absurd (laughs) (laughs) i think it's got to be it has to be christian christian needs to come in as as leo sunshadow he's already said that uh he wants to cosplay uh for gen con and so he has to and then papa pratt can definitely come in as victoria i mean i think i think the uh Key thing about Gen Con is they're gonna have a Leo Sunshadow cutout that you can win. Yes, uh, that's the important part. That is the most important part. Uh, the winner of I think it's the winner of the Saturday top eight and uh, the winners of each uh, drafts get a cutout. Yep. So there's a possibility yep. of getting three cutouts, and you might as well ask for three Leos. I have a feeling those cutouts are going to be Leo, Victoria, and Oryx, though. That will be my uh, guess. Right? Because they probably had the cutouts for the for the convention, and then they just give away the three cutouts they had for the expansion. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. But what makes even more sense is just having three Leos. <laughs> just three Leos? <laughs> makes the most sense. Oh, boy. Um, oh man! <laughs> all right, so Leo Sunshadow, Phoenix Born of Never Set, Battlefield Six, Nineteen Life, Spellboard Three, Summon Glowfinch. It's a side action uh, exhaust and one basic to place a Glowfinch conjuration onto your battlefield. Glowfinch, uh, Wall of Text. Um, <laughs> It's got unit guard. It has decoy where when a unit you control would become the target of a spell ability or dice power. And this unit could have been chosen as a target. Uh, You may place one exhaustion token on this unit to change the chosen target to be this unit instead. And then it has two inexhaustible abilities. Last request one. When this unit is destroyed, discard one card off the top of a target player's draw pile. And Magic Rejuvenation, side action, remove an alteration spell attached to this unit from the game. If you do, remove all exhaustion tokens from this unit. It has an attack of 0, life of 2, and a recover of 1. You can only summon one Glowfinch. Thank goodness. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Two life recover, one is nice touch, because... um they don't uh, do that two damage to it it's gonna re- when you do the one it's gonna live and it's gonna be uh healing up for the next round yep which is bad so here's uh, it's bad for you on the opponent side here's the thing with glowfinch guys um since you can only have one if it's already out leo doesn't actually have any side action ability mm-hmm. um so the best case scenario for you is that the glowfinch dies the round after you summon it every time yep because that means it dies and then you can just bring it right back and then it dies and you bring it right back unit guard and decoy make it the ultimate shield yep um sorry to go be sun shield but this one's better <laughs> <laughs> it will protect a unit steady gaze can't hit you molten gold can't hit you water blast uh spirit burn you name it this guy is this guy is is like given something better i mean think about it if you could have the glowfinch and the ravens in a deck woo, woo. some fun stuff glowfinch protected raven at this point i don't think uh raven really needs any protecting i mean we'll we'll see why we'll see why but um Oops. but yeah last request is fun that's kind of a neat ability i don't know if it's necessary it's just like they're like, well, his deck is milling, so we'll just give it this last request ability. Right. Uh, last request is to get, uh, like what Eric said, to get the most value out of this card, you want it to die. You want it to get rid of cards. And that's actually, you know, uh, a good point to bring up. Um, the errated 
and Chain of Violinists still works with Leo because of Glowfinch. Still works with uh, a Leo because of a lot of his cards as well. Um, but Glowfinch helps as um, Glowfinch helps, and um, uh, Decoy keeps your EV alive. Uh, unit guard, same thing. So yeah. Um, Spellboard. I mean, it's a solid ability. Yeah. Solid unit. Yeah. Magic rejuvenation is a really cool ability. Yep. Uh, it's a very neat ability to have. But that you can. It's all exhaustion tokens, so you can. It's a refresh. Yes. And uh, for anybody who's uh, relatively new to Ashes, just know that alterations do not target, so you cannot decoy an alteration onto the Glowfinch. Um, that is right. the only the only thing that you uh, can't do is decoy an alteration. Um, but anything that says target is fair game. Yeah, so like Regress is still going to get through on that Hammer Knight. Yep. I think Leo's got something in his deck to answer that. We'll get to. Yes. Um, Leo himself has got six Battlefield, which is solid. My personal favorite. It is Battlefield. equal to the amount of abs that he has. He has yep. six. <laughs> Spellboard three. <laughs> um, you know, that's that's six Battlefield. Spellboard three is like Noah. Noah probably has a six pack too underneath all that clothes, or they're illusionary six pack. I don't, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> um, he's got 19 lives. He's got one one fewer life than than Noah. Yeah. Um, he's got Bass Glowfinch, and he's got a unique card that is not awful. We're gonna see that. He's also not committed to any dice color. You'll see his ability is a basic die. Yeah. So, no commitment to any color with his with his side action. Solid Phoenix Born. Solid side action ability the first side action ability by the way that gives you a unit so that's really cool um yeah so, so oh, let, 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 yeah let's cover this real quick what so some th common answers people are going to try to find with glowfinch is um uh oh is my stream jumping out is it i'm checking Maybe not. So, one uh, common thing for Glowfinch is going to be, oops, is how do I answer this? You're going to say, okay, I can ice trap the Glowfinch, or I can choke Leo and just stop the Glowfinch from being summoned. I highly recommend you do the choke route, if possible. Here's why, guys. If Leo, if Leo's playing Ceremonial, and you he side actions Glowfinch round one, and you ice trap it, he can widows and then attack you right away for four damage. Yeah. So just be wary of that. The first time it happens to you, you're going to be like, damn, I fell right into that. Whereas if you choked Leo's ability, he wouldn't be able to, he wouldn't be able to play that reaction spell. Say, but Eric, what if he vanishes the choke? I don't think you can't banish Choke, actually, because it targets abilities. Choke OP still. That's right, right? Choke um, Choke um, targets an ability's effect, like an ability itself, and not a specific unit or Phoenix Born. Yeah. Um... Yes, yeah. Because if that was the case, then technically you could. Wait, don't. Uh, oh. All right, I guess we'll oh, just. Oh, you can rewind. You can rewind. Oh, no. We're screwing everything up. Oh, no. That's okay. Okay. That's okay. We're good. We're fine. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Anguish. Anguish is Leo's uh, uh, Phoenix Born unique card. It's an action spell, uh, two basic dice. Um, once again, not locked into a specific color. Uh, choose a target Phoenix Born. Its controlling player may discard one card at random from their hand. If they do not or cannot, place two wound tokens on that Phoenix Born. Then choose a target Phoenix Born. 
Its controlling player may move two dice of your choice from their active pool to their exhausted pool. If they do not or cannot, place two wounds on their uh, on that Phoenixborn. So, um, I've played with this card a lot, and I've had, uh, I've used it as a, um, uh, as part of a first five, and it gets really expensive. Um, I've used it also as, uh, not as a part of the first five, and it has some uses. Uh, it's very hard to... Um, determine when to use it, especially with Leo, because he doesn't have dice recursion, um, unless you, you know, put, uh, extra cards, you like hidden power or, uh, or expand energy in his deck to, um, to get that, uh, recursion. Um, so... Honestly, I mean, when you, if you use it in your first five as your, as the first card you play, chances are they're going to take two, two wounds, uh, and then they'll just let, you know, two cards go or two dice go. Um, and it's, uh, I don't know. It's very, it's very, um, multiple personality. It's very, um, awkward to use because if you're trying to burn them and they decide that they don't want to be burned, then it's completely up to them. If you're trying to exhaust their options and you, they don't want to be exhausted of their options, then, um, it's their choice once again. So, uh, so yeah, it's, it's a hard card to use. Um, but most likely you are going to want to use it in a burn deck. And, uh, uh, when you do, you have to, uh, wait until they've used up all of their options first. You know, like if they have one die left and no cards in hand, then you use anguish and they are taking four, four wound and you have, you've done, you know, what you wanted to do. Um, but you have to get to that point first. Yeah, it's um, definitely a cool card. When you first see this card, you're just like, what? This, how is this balanced? How is this possibly balanced? And you're probably thinking about it in the context of round one where you play Anguish and you're probably doing four wounds on a unit on a Phoenix Born for two dice, which is really good um, for two basic dice. Yeah. The fact that it's too basic is another thing that Leo is not committed to any colors. Um, he can play in literally his unique card and his exploring ability to not lock him down to any colors. Contrast that with Noah, who has a very similar ta battlefield, very similar spellboard, but whose unique card and Phoenix Born ability lock him into two different colors. Mm -hmm. Now, you don't you usually don't play with wolves, so it's okay, but. You know, there's a lot more flexibility on this Phoenix Born because of it, um, which is interesting. You're right. This ability, this card is like, is fantastic round one. And then later on, it takes a lot of subtlety. It takes a little finesse on how you play it to get the most benefit from it. Uh, so WKU fan asks, uh, which color do you think he lends himself to? Uh, personally, I think he, he tends towards, uh, ceremonial more. Um, I think he benefits a lot more from ceremonial because he can get, um, because ceremonial wants, uh, you know, to put damage on the opponent. Wants to, uh, in in the form of fire archers, in the form of uh, final cries, and and all that, you know, all that stuff. And not only that, but um, uh, like you could you could make a very good burn deck with Leo. Like I said, um, so ceremonial ceremonial nature or uh, ceremonial. Now ceremonial charm um, is a decent option, um, but yeah, uh, you're pretty much looking at just 
trying to get as much damage on the opponent as you can. So I'm going to disagree a little bit. I don't think I think you can actually play him in. Because he's all basics, you can play him in really whatever. Because um, you could play him in Ceremonial and do direct damage. You could also play him in a Ceremonial and do an ally-centric deck where you're like, I'm going to drop a Hammer Knight and protect it with a... Glowfinch. Um, Glowfinch. Right. Um, you could do it in a shell type of burn where you're like, I'm going to put a bunch of little weak units there and, and burn them. Or you could do it You could do it in a mill deck. You really could do it in a mill deck that's just trying to shell out because um, Glowfinch provides you with essentially a, another spell board book um, on your f side of the field. And it's a very good unit. It protects your units. It protects you. Um, so you could have Glowfinch with a bunch of weenies and just with that six battlefields, you can stop attackers cold. Um, or you could, you know, be aggressive with it. It's very, I think it's very flexible. Um, I think you can see a lot of variations of Leo with it. Um, Anguish is an interesting card. Maybe you don't play Anguish in all those styles of deck. It might be a card that you... Um, I think that's what I mean. That's pretty much what I was, because uh, I was I was trying to look at it in the form of you know like both anguish and Leo, because um, if you if you have anguish, it's uh, honestly I think it's better off that you have uh, anguish in a straight damage uh, deck, right? Because uh, you want to try to deal as much damage if they. Um, if you have a, a mill deck and they decide, oh, I'm just going to, um, take, uh, I don't know, two for two, uh, or two of the, or yeah, two wounds rather than the four wounds, uh, and just let one of my cards go or let two of my dice go, um, anguish isn't really doing its, its job. Yeah, I disagree with that. In a mill deck, I think it does do its job. If yeah. you take two dice, you take two power dice. Now they have to meditate to get two power dice back. If you take a card from their hand, that's another card that you've milled. Um, if you do wounds on them, you have to do wounds to eventually win the game anyway. Yeah. So I think in a mill deck, it actually, you're okay with any result that comes out of it. Whereas in a burn deck, if they decide to discard a card or take the two dice, it didn't do anything for you as a burn deck. Okay. I see what you mean. So you were saying about um, not using anguish in uh, certain types of decks. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe you don't want to play all of them. Actually, I was thinking about like a, an aggressive deck, so like a deck that runs hammer knights sort of thing. Right. Maybe you don't want anguish, just because there's going to be times where you have it and they're just going to end up getting the dice exhausted or. Uh, discarding a random card, and it's it's going to be two dice you spend that don't that doesn't do damage for you. Um, but then again, maybe you just with, because you really would want to play it in that deck in a situation where they're forced to take the wounds mm -hmm. um, because they don't have enough dice to exhaust or they don't have any cards in hand. But if you don't have anything to kind of push them towards that situation, um, it's not as reliable. Who knows? Maybe you're okay with exhausting dice in a. Uh, aggressive deck like that because that means that they have less answers for your your units that are attacking now um so we were talking about how anguish in your first five is pretty good um what about not putting anguish in your first five because i've started i've started trying to lean towards that trying to uh get anguish you know like later later on um I mean, you can do that, and I think uh, I don't think it's a bad choice. I just feel like it has it's. I mean, the first five it's pretty much four, four wounds. Your opponent starts the four. It's two dice. It's like saying you start the game with a first four mm -hmm. and eight dice, and your opponent starts the game with four fewer life. You're like, hmm, that's a pretty good ability. Now, maybe there's some Phoenix Borns you don't care about doing that as much. Like, if Mayoni comes back, maybe you don't want to anguish Mayoni round one. 
I, I mean, you have to do the damage anyway. Maybe, but you, you, there are situations where you'd rather spend that. And what it really comes down to is that fifth slot in your first five. Yeah. Is that you want to use that fifth slot for something else to set up your spell board um, so that you can get more things out there or set up a, or play another ally or something. Yeah. Um, so I could definitely see an argument for that where you say, I'm just going to hold it. I'm going to draw the anguishes later and I'll play them. Um, I'll either create the situation where I play them and they end up taking the wounds or mandatorily or, or I'll create situations where I'm okay with them taking the discard or taking the uh, I, the discard is kind of a weird one because if they discard one at random I don't think you're happy most of the time unless it's from the first five the dice one is probably the, the better the better trade you're, you're more interested in I agree. Um, in in following rounds, uh, you're really more focused on the dice uh, than the um, than the cards in their hand. Because I mean, you know, if even if you take out something like um, like there, there's a possibility that they might have multiples of the same card in their hand, and if you get rid of that, it doesn't really bother them that much. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, um, I don't know, I'd have to, I mean, I've only really played Anguish against one type of deck, uh, and that is Exhaustion, because a certain someone loves playing Exhaustion. <laughs> uh, who, who's that? <laughs> is it Bob? <laughs> Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> that crazy Colin loves playing exhaustion. <laughs> All right. Let's roll on. Got to get through this. Yes. Uh, I gotta get through this. Beast Tamer. So, uh, Beast Tamer is a an ally. Uh, attack three, life three, recover two. Um, one power charm, one uh, class charm and one basic uh, and it has diminish one as an ability after an opponent has declared attackers you may spend one basic to reduce the attack value of each attacking unit by one for the remainder of this turn um, so this is pretty much a counter to lulu first of all uh, that's probably the first thing that most people will think uh, is you know, like, okay, Lulu spends one die to bolster, Beast Tamer spends one die to negate that. Um, or is Lulu a counter to Beast Tamer? Oh. Uh, ah. Ah. And so the hourglass turns. <laughs> uh, this is a great unit. Yes, I, I like this unit. Um... It's got a very pow powerful ability. First of all, it doesn't have to exhaust to use it. Uh, so you can use it multiple times in a round. Um, and then second of all, I mean, you know, that, that Frostback Bear, uh, if, you're, if they're attacking with a Frostback Bear, you spend one die. Now that, that bear is like, all it's doing is just doing one damage to a unit or uh, two damage to Phoenixborn. And that's a bit more manageable than uh, um, the three damage, right? Um, yeah. It's a, it's a, uh, another thing with bears is that if they don't have dice for freeze, um, it trades really well with bears because uh, if they don't have any dice left, the beast tamer will hit the bear for three. Uh, kill it, and the bear will hit the beast timber for two, and they will recover two. Yeah. So it's going to be fresh. Yep. That's also a very good point. Um, cover two, man. That's, that's really good. <laughs> it's really good. Yeah. It's only charm, so that's, you know, this is uh, the first charm only uh, unit ally, I think. The, the other charm allies had ceremonial in them. Living doll, blood archer, yeah, I think so. 
So it's the first ally that is only charm, and it's it's three dice. It's very similar cost to Hammer Knight, power class basic, except this is all charm, um, which makes it arguably a little bit easier to cast. And um, maybe not. Depends, I guess, what type of decks you want to play. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, yeah. at that point, you know, like you're either going five or more charm so that you can play beast hammer or you have some kind of dice recursion um so even then like if you if you put beast hammer in a deck with only three charm dice um unless beast hammer is literally the only charm uh necessary or charm card that you have in there it's probably not something that you want to put in um so, so yeah, I mean, I think uh, having it all charm is very, very nice, and uh, it definitely boosts uh, it definitely boosts charm quite a bit. Yeah, it's uh, nice. It's real nice. That's a great unit. Just, just fantastic ally. Yeah, fantastic. I don't know if he's a good beast tamer though, because he's got a giant scratch on his face. It looks like it's fresh. It doesn't look like a scar. So he's not the best beast tamer, but <laughs> <laughs> great ally. Amplify. Right. This artwork is pretty cool. Yeah, I I mean all the artwork has been really awesome. And uh I feel like in this expansion, Fernanda has really brightened up uh the colors the um uh it really it really screams charm illusion honestly i mean like when i when i think of ceremonial i think very you know like drab very uh um a lot of earth tones same thing with nature very earthy um but charm and illusion you've got colors out the wazoo uh, anyway, so Amplify is an alteration spell. Uh, it is one charm class to play, uh, one main action and charm. And uh, it's got an inexhaustible ability. X equals the number of charm dice on this unit. And uh, attack X, life X, recover X. So... We were talking about earlier uh, how Shadow Spirit and um, Butterfly Monks have that X um, cost to them uh, and how amazing it was uh, for anybody who, was, um, who wasn't who was around for Victoria. Um, you know, that's what makes Shadow Spirit is the X life. Uh, and then and now you've got Amplify, which is an alteration spell that gives uh, X based on the number of charm dice and uh, charm, charm, uh, the charm power um, being able to pump up uh, units um, by being placed on a unit and getting giving it plus one attack and plus one uh, life. That means that if you have Amplify on it, uh, you are essentially giving that unit plus two attack, plus two life, and plus one recover. Um, and that's just with a uh, one class die and one uh, power die. Um, yeah, it's really plus. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a really good card. Uh, it's extremely good card, actually. Um, yeah, every power die is plus two attack, plus two life, and you get one recover as a bonus. And recover is really good. This card's super scary on Ravens. Uh, I'm not gonna lie; mm -hmm. it's really scary on on Ravens. Um, a Raven with this card and a single Charm die it does five damage, has four life, and recovers one. Put another one on there; it recovers two. Does seven damage. It's got battle advantage and it's got magic guard, so no spells can hit it. Yeah, it becomes very scary. Um, if it can hit no in, then you take a lot of damage. This is a really good card. I'm curious to see if, like, it'd be cool to see Frostfang with this card. The Frostfang can make some stuff work. It's already got Recover 1, so... Yeah. So... Should we try Rin, Rin, Frostfang, and Amplify. 
It goes boom, frost fang, ice buff it, throw an amplify on there. Two dice so far. Two dice if you buff it once, and it does a three damage, four life, and two recover. That's actually that's actually not a bad unit. Uh, <laughs> three attack, battle advantage with four life, two recover, and uh, rapid healing for three dice. Hold on, I'm trying to look at what Elliot just said. He said uh, this is part of a cycle, or he thinks it's this is part of a cycle. You can't see it, but there's a snake in this picture, and this pumps up your snakes. Frostbite pumps up your frogs, because uh, there's a frog in the picture by letting it hit players. What? Is is the are the wings supposed to be snake like? I don't know. I don't. I don't know like what he's talking eyes, about. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure what he's talking about too. Oh, I, that guy's. That's a weird guy. I don't know. He's <laughs> <laughs> got respark one also. Let's not forget. So yes. One basic die you can bring him back. Respark one. Um, I don't know. Is it worth it to uh, respark though? I mean, if you have the if you have the dice uh, available, then you might as well. But. If, let's yeah, say, probably. you're thinking about it and you're like, well, I could do this with, uh, I could, I don't know, uh, deal an extra damage with Respark or, or I mean, not with Respark, uh, deal an extra damage with that die or Respark uh, Amplify. I mean, if your deck is running Amplify, you probably have stuff built around it, so you you probably respark the Amplify. I don't think Amplify is a card that you're like, oh, I'm just gonna throw this in my charm deck, <laughs> right? It's a card you're gonna have your deck, you know, be able to take advantage of. You could just put one of every single card in your in your deck, though. Uh, yeah, I just I don't think you're building a charm a deck that has charm in it. You're like, oh, I need three more cards. Amplify yeah. seems pretty good. Let me throw that in there. It, you know, it's a card that you're going to want the rest of the deck to complement. Yeah. <laughs> so you probably do respark it. And, and it's probably situational. You know, you don't always respark it, but. Yeah. So how many, how many would you put in your deck, though? So it's really fun to double amplify a unit. I mean, if you can double amplify a unit, every single power charm you put on there gives it three extra attack yeah. that's ridiculous it's ridiculous very quickly you put two charm on there and then boom it's got six extra attack it's very fun to do i don't know i'm not a i would play amplify in a raven decks and there i would run three copies because you want to draw into it as soon as possible i can definitely see that yeah I'd agree. Uh, I'd agree that Ravens, uh, if you're going to play Ravens, you want Amplify. And it also helps that, you know, it is Charm, so, and, and Saria loves Charm, because her ability requires Charm. Um, so you're getting really good benefit out of it. So Elliot says, to clarify, it's like, a card that does the same thing or something very similar to the power dice ability of a, of a color, but at a better cost. So Amplify basically means that, it's not really taking the place of it, but uh, a snake now, it gives better buffs than a snake die does. Oh, okay. Or, or like a Frostbite is more flexible damage than a frog ping. And... Bound Soul is the same as the ceremonial power die for uh, yeah, ceremonial power die, except you don't have to take the take damage. any damage. Okay, all right. But there's not any for illusion right now. That's like you pay it, and you get to exhaust dice at cheaper or nothing, nothing like that for illusion. Change. Psyche. Change Psyche. Uh, so Change Psyche is an action spell. Uh, requires uh, one charm class and one basic. 
uh, to remove one exhaustion token from a target unit or place one ooh. exhaustion token from a target on it. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Can, I, can I say it? Can I say it? Sure. The picture is was beauty that tamed the beast. <laughs> beast tamer. <laughs> Clever. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed it was Beast Tamer. And I was like, oh, I got this. <laughs> uh, it's nice. No, I like it. Hashtag it. So, yeah, hashtag. Uh, the clothes keep the rose. Nerf the clothes. Leave the rose. Nerf the clothes. Leave the rose. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, so. It's an interesting card. It is. Um, well, I wouldn't say interesting. I mean, it's it's uh, basically uh, a different version of refresh or transfer or uh, uh, nope. Those are the only ones, right? Yeah. Um, yep. Closer to transfer than it is to refresh. Right. Yeah. Close to tra transfer. Um, I mean, right now. Um, It's a mix of both. It's interesting. So, I tell you that I played a game with Christian where he he changed Psyche and uh, amplified Raven mm -hmm. like twice in one round. So, you know, I was like, oh damn, that does that that did that. Um, it has the flexibility. Like if that color instead of it being changed Psyche, if it was transfer, it wouldn't have been as good because you'd have to transfer it to another card that he had out. Yeah. Which maybe he had something available. Maybe he didn't. If it had so, so transfer actually doesn't reduce the number of uh, exhaustion tokens. It's actually going to increase it because you're attacking with uh, that unit again, right? Which is going to add another exhaustion token to your side. So it's just you're going to pile up. Um, refresh would have done the same thing, but refresh isn't as flexible because refresh doesn't allow you to exhaust something else if you needed to, right? It's only one exhaustion, but maybe you need to exhaust something so that you can attack in with an amplified unit. I guess it it all depends on what you are. I mean, if you're going to be using a, uh, any of these cards, refresh, change psyche, or transfer, it all depends on what you're trying to look for. Like, if you're trying to look for something that, or if you've got a deck that's all about attacking in with, like, a specific unit, um, then... Chain Psyche might be the better option. If you're trying to uh, disrupt, uh, either give yourself like more utility or disrupt your opponent, um, then transfer might be better. And then if you, yeah, if you're like super super scared of blood chains, then put in refresh. I mean, I think transfer is better to be used on spellboard. Right. Cards. Yeah. Yeah. Which is um, why, which which is what I meant by uh, the utility. Like you, you want to be able to give yourself um, a another, you know, option, right, for your spell board. Because um, right now, that's the only way to essentially give yourself. Uh, uh, well, actually, that and open memories uh, will give yourself another. Um, Uh, yeah, spellboard use. There we go. Right, right. <clears throat> Hola, como esta? Um, hey, chief, can I call you back in thirteen minutes? Sure, just about. Oh. Wait, did you say my name or did you say? Uh, no, that was that was me. Hold on. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, all right. So, um, I have to go like pretty soon. So let's try to fly through these guys. All right. Let's uh, let's go through. Psyche. Okay. Uh, final comments on change psyche. No one really plays transfer or refresh right now. Um, I think this one's more flexible, so maybe it'll see more play than the two. 
but I don't. I wouldn't expect. Yeah, I think it might, it's more flexible, so it might see more play than those two. I can see that. Dispel. Dispel. All right. So, so this is a card. Yeah, it's um, it's really nice. Uh, since it's um. It's one. It's one uh, basic to remove two status tokens from a target card, or choose a target alteration spell. If that alteration spell is a conjured alteration spell, return it to its owner's uh, conjuration pile. Otherwise, shuffle it into its owner's draw pile. Um, so it's a good counter against uh, any you know negative early regress. Yeah. Uh, it also. Let's. It's good counter for that early regress. Yeah. Um, so if they regress your Hammer Knight, boom, gone. Right. Hammer Knight's going in. Uh, you can also use it to essentially save your massive growth. Uh, so, you know, like round's almost over. You can dispel your massive growth and put it back in your deck and uh, save it for later or something like that. Or just, you know, yeah. like accidentally meditate it off because that's likely that's to happen. That's what happens. <laughs> It's also a good answer to the Chain of Protection. Um, yes. Because it removes your stats tokens from Chain of Protection. So you're like, okay, Dispel, Chain of Protection, boom, boom. You, uh, I've just removed two tokens from that card, so now it's not as a big of a problem for me. Um, that, this card's interesting to me. I like that it exists in the card pool. I don't know how, how many people are going to play it un until the meta... Until the meta requires them to play it, I don't know if people are going to play it as much. Um, it's really interesting to me to be able to do something like Hammer Knight, Glow Finch, Dispel. Now that Hammer Knight is not getting stopped. Yeah. Like, it's going to be difficult to stop that Hammer Knight. Um, which is very interesting to me. So that You could still stop it. You could still choke and then Fire Arch or Water Blast, you know, yeah. whatever. Uh, but it's, it's just a big thing. Elliot also asks, isn't Final Cry just as efficient? For hitting uh, champ protection? Not really, because this is a, an action spell. It's not a reaction. It's not. A, it's a basic die. You don't have to be in ceremonial. Um, you also don't have to... It's a basic die, I mean, and you also don't have to wait until a, uh, a unit dies, too. Like, if your unit doesn't yeah. ever die, then... Yeah, the only thing that's tricky with... Uh, Oh, let's see. Giraffe, uh, Julian asks, which is better, Dispel or Cut the Strings? Dispel is better because it doesn't have to do damage to your own units. And it doesn't take up With a spellboard spell slot. To, yeah, and you take up a spellboard slot. Yeah. Um, the tricky part of the spell is going to be that if they don't have any... If they don't have chain protection and they don't have any alterations to put on you, the card's dead. Mm -hmm. So that's the tricky part. It's going to be you... If you play in your first five because you want that Hammer Knight to go through without getting regressed, now if they don't play regress, you wasted a slot card in your first five. So there's going to be a lot of mind games there. Really interesting. All right. Next one. Memory Theft. Ooh. Memory Theft. Bellboard, one charm. Main action, look at target player's hand. That player may discard one card of your choice from their hand if they do not or cannot place a wound token on their Phoenix Born. <clears throat> I played a game once with this card where I did like five points of damage with memory theft or five wounds with memory theft. It was pretty fun. I think that was also against me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this card's kind of interesting. I mean, being able to look at your opponent's hand is really strong uh, because you know what options they have, you know any reactions they're going to play. And if you're playing Illusion, you know what um, which dice to exhaust right. because you know what they can play and you can pick. Um, that being said, I think the spellboard slot is tight. Like if spellboard slots are tight, so having to ha this card taking up one of those slots is probably the biggest detriment and the biggest cost um, playing it. Agreed. Um, and you you really only want to have. If you're going to be playing with it, you really only need just one of them, honestly. I don't see, uh, I don't really see, you know, like, having multiple memory thefts in a deck uh, being um, very uh, efficient or even necessary. 
Well, it's not terrible. Um, it's not terrible because you either get a wound on them for one, which is not great, right? Um, or you discard one of the cards from their hand. Again, not great. It's not terrible, but it's you're right. It's not. You really only prefer just to have the one. You don't really want to draw more memory. You're effects. right. Yeah. So you're right. Yeah. But I mean, it's a cool card. Uh, it's, it's. I really like this card um, being in the card pool. There's a lot of cards in this deck that I've said that um, I just really like the fact that they're in the card pool um, for the future of the game. They're really interesting um, options. I do want to have a deck that, that uh, plays Memory Theft and uses that hand knowledge to abuse your opponent. Um, I don't know if that's one thing I want something I want to do just yet, but it's something that would be really fun to do later on. Mm-hmm. Mind probe. She's just staring at his chest. Look at that. She didn't even look in his eyes. <laughs> Abs. Uh, so it's one one class uh, charm. Choose a target opponent to reveal the top five cards of their draw pile. Choose one of those revealed cards and remove it from the game. Return the rest of the revealed cards to the top of that opponent's draw pile in the order of your choice. Uh, so, first of all, uh, you do have to reveal uh, the cards that uh, from the top five, but you do not have to show uh, how you put them back. So, you know, once you reveal them, you pick them back up, and you put them, you know, however way you want to place them back onto the uh, onto the deck so it it offers a lot of uh, mind games once again it kind of goes with the theme of uh, uh, Leo um, um, it's not the greatest ability right to be honest looking at the top five cards you get to remove one from the game which can be cool but is it worth one of your cards to do that I don't I don't think it is um. Yeah, I mean, the way I look at this card is, is I what I ask myself is, okay, if it said look at the top five, ten, look at the top ten cards of their draw pile, and remove one, would I think it would be better? Yeah, probably. Uh, if you can look at the top ten, now you're pretty much guaranteed to be able to pick out whatever, remove whatever card you didn't want to deal with. Mm-hmm. Um, with the top five, it's kind of. Rob, you you know you might not get something that you want to remove as much. Top ten, you're like, okay, I get to remove that molten gold, guaranteed. One molten gold is gone. Um, it's and it. I mean, if you click a top ten, you would be able to know. Okay, these are the ten cards that they're gonna have available to them the next round or two. It might be really strong actually that way. Because now you know. Okay, this is what I'm gonna have. They're gonna have available to them in the next two rounds or round and a half so I know what I have to be prepared for then it's with the top five you're like eh. then it's also like what uh, Elliot has said on uh, the Slack channel where uh, if let's say you reveal even if you're revealing ten if if you're like alright well I want to give them the worst hand for the next round uh, you know they could just say alright well they're probably going to give me the worst hand for the next round. I'll just meditate off the top five then. Uh, well, that's okay. If they're meditating, they're losing cards. And also, you, you think that I think. Right, exactly. You think that I think that. So I put the five. So I, it's a lot I, of mind games. I was games. referring more to the fact that you know what their next nine cards are, period. Right, right. Regardless yeah. of what order yeah. you put So them now back. you know. Like usually, yeah. So now, I mean, it's essentially you know almost uh, half of their, like two-fifths of their, their deck. Uh, if you have Mind Probe in your first five. Um, and it was top ten cards. Right, with top right? ten. It was top ten cards. It becomes interesting to me, actually. I kind of I kind of like it. Um, with it being top five cards, not great. Also, if you draw into this late, like let's say you have multiple copies or you didn't start with it, uh, it's useless when your opponent has no cards in their deck. Yep. Something to keep in mind. It's got that purge problem where when their deck is empty, the card does nothing. It's a dead card, completely dead. Um, so that's something else to keep in mind with it. I'm not a fan of it as is. So 
I like the idea a lot. Like the concept is cool. I just don't. And I mean, when you uh, when you look at the rest of the precon compared to the rest of the precon, um, Mind Probe does have uh, decent combos with uh, some of the other cards. What we're gonna look up uh, soon is um, Remorse. Uh, it goes well with Glowfinch. It goes well with, um, uh, I think there was one more. Yeah, it's, uh, the banana. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nightshade Swallow. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it has, it has, like, uh, if you're just looking at Precon, it has, you know, the combinations there. But, um... In actual competitive play, I think you're you're better off trying to get something out onto the board because, you know, chances are you play Mind Probe, they play a Hammer Knight, and, you know, what are you going to do against that? Yeah, you, you, the problem comes with the card slot, right? That's the yeah. biggest problem. Like, what its effect for the cost of one charm is not overpriced. I mean, one charm seems reasonable for that effect. The problem is that it takes up a card from your hand. So, like, let's talk about this. If Mind Probe was a spellboard card, now it becomes really good. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the fact that it's an action spell that you lose afterwards that makes it not great. Remorse. Remorse. Reaction spell. Uh, one charm, one basic. One charm uh, class, one basic. You may play this spell after an opponent takes and attack a Phoenixborn main action or attack a unit main action. Deal two damage to a target Phoenixborn. The player that controls that Phoenixborn must discard two cards off the top of their draw pile. If they cannot, deal one additional uh, damage to their Phoenixborn. So it's an interesting card. It's a reaction spell uh, in the same color as Sympathy Pain. Mm -hmm. A little cheaper to play. And it's actually the first reaction spell we have that triggers off of a... Uh, I have a main action um, that an opponent takes, I believe. So yep. this is just your opponent taking the main action. Uh, cool things you can do with this card are very similar to the Sympathy Pain. Uh, let's say your opponent says, okay, I'm going to attack you and swing in. And you have no blockers. If I hit you with these, this attack, you lose the game. Uh, you can play Remorse as a reaction and then deal two damage to them. And if they had two life, you, you win the game um, because the attack never goes through. Um, very similar to Sympathy Pain. So that's pretty cool. And then it's got a nifty little milling effect where it discards two cards at the top of their draw pile. And if uh, they don't have a draw pile, they take another damage. It's a very interesting card to me. Um, it's more burn, which, you know, take that ha however you will. <laughs> if you wanted more burn cards, there you go. You have another option. Um, and it's not difficult to trigger. Nope. Whenever your opponent attacks, period. Uh -uh. Easier to pay for than Sympathy Pain. And it has a little side bonus of discarding two from their deck. So, uh, there, on the Slack channel, um, in the rule section, there was actually uh, someone who asked. I think it was, uh, yeah, it was um, Alessandro Vidya Raja. Um, he said that um, perhaps the remorse is actually played after the attack action has completely concluded. Uh, Is it? Yeah, that's what... I mean, I, I originally thought it was just after you take the main action. After you say, I am going to do attack a Phoenixborn main action. That's when you... Yeah, that's how I interpreted it also. Um, Is it after the action completes? That's a great question. Maybe I'm wrong about what I just said if that's... We have to find out, guys. That's a good question. I mean, I think... I think Bob is. Bob is in the, is in the this channel. Video. Oh no, my video. Bob's in the channel. I don't know if he's gonna answer, but I, I mean, it makes. I could see it after it, the action completely com is completely over. You can play this. That makes it not as good. That's the case. That makes it. Oops. Worse than I thought. Um. Still okay, probably. I don't. I'm I, so I've been trying to play it, and the only th I like it when I have it, and I don't have sympathy pain. 
I realized that I don't like it when I have it and I also have sympathy pain. And it's like, well, I can only play one of these. Um, the moment when they attack. Now you can trigger your own sympathy pain if you're playing ceremonial, but if you're not playing ceremonial, you get into a situation where you're like, eh, can I play one of these? Um, unless my opponent attacks multiple times, in which case you're golden, but if uh, if they if they um, decide to group up their attacks because colors you're playing and things, it gets a little awkward. So Elliot does say that it's worded just like poison, and that's also how poison works. Um, this does this say after like poison does, so maybe. Oh, um, I need to make a phone call. Actually, we've been going longer than I thought we would. Um, okay. Probably, I don't know if it's like a twenty-minute break or something, but you can keep talking about the cards. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I can come back and give my my feedback on the on the last two, the two best ones too. Best ones, the two most interesting. Wait, is this Wait, the wrong one? Yeah, it is. Here we go. It's a tough pill to swallow. This is a banana bird, guys. Look at this banana bird. <clears throat> banana bird. Ready spell. Uh, <laughs> bird. Main action, two back. class. Place a nightshade swallow conjuration onto your uh, battlefield. Focus one, you may choose a target player to discard one card off the top of their draw pile. If you have fewer dice in your active pool than an opponent. Uh, and then the Nightshade Swallow, it's a 1-2-1. One, uh, one. So one attack, two life, one recover. When this unit deals one or more damage to a unit it is attacking or countering, destroy the unit that received damage. Uh, so it has been, uh, we've talked about this a lot in our, uh, in the Slack channel, um, about how if, uh, Nightshade Swallow gets, um, the damage gets prevented, then nothing happens because it's, uh, it has to wait until the unit has actually received the damage before it, uh, gets destroyed. So... It's a good wall, um, and that's essentially what it is. Eric has mentioned it before, uh, that since it has the recover one, it makes that makes it a wall. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if uh, I don't know if it's going to see a lot of play though. Um, two two class to play it is a lot. It's very costly for a one two one um and i feel personally i feel like there's uh better there's better options uh than playing the nightshade swallow um Yeah, and it looks like a banana. All right, I'm just going to go on to the final one, uh, Orga Dove, and summon its uh, summon spell. All right, so summon Orchid Dove. Uh, summon Orchid Dove is another ready spell. Uh, main action, one class, uh, charm class die. Place an Orca Dove Conjuration onto your battlefield. Focus one, you may change the activation of this cost, or of this spell to one basic. And then focus two, you may deal one damage to a target player's Phoenixborn if they do not have any cards in their draw pile. Um, Orca Dove itself is a one attack, one life, zero recover. Uh, with the inexhaustible ability, Peaceful Melody, your opponents cannot take and attack a Phoenixborn main action or attack a unit main action. During their turn, an opponent may spend one basic die. If they do, all units are no longer considered to have the Peaceful Melody ability for the remainder of that turn. Um, so essentially what it's saying is, you, in order to attack, if the opponent has, uh, or if you have... Uh, just one Orchid Dove, one or two, one or more, uh, 
the opponent or you would have to pay one extra die to attack. Um, and that is probably what makes this card amazing. It's essentially uh, a one-to-one -one trade because uh, if you put down an Orca Dove, you, you just spent one die to put down an Orca Dove and they need to now spend one die to either attack or one die to uh, take out the Orca Dove. Um, chances are if they have uh, nat uh, nature dice, they're going to use that nature die to uh, eliminate the Orca Dove. But at that point, you've, it's done what you've wanted it to do. It has actually, at that point, it might even have done more than what you wanted it to do. Um, you have forced them to use a side action, and you also, uh, they also had to spend a die to take out uh, a unit and uh, be able to attack in. Um, if they let the Orchid Dove live and just decide, I'm just going to uh, spend the die to attack then they, they've they spent the die. I mean, either way, they will have to spend a die. Um, and then, of course, having... Uh, I think the sweet spot is definitely having two Orchid Doves on your battlefield. Because uh, with two, uh, they need to spend a die to take out one, but then they still need to, ta uh, to use another die to take out the other one, or use um, uh, use it to attack. So, you know, two orchid doves. You're essentially uh, giving yourself um, two for well, two for two in the same round. But if they live in the next rounds, uh, yeah. Uh, so the focus one ability, amazing. Amazing ability. The fact that it changes from... I mean, it's just like uh, the Mass Wolves. You know, you would rather... Uh, rather than... Well, no. Which one? Uh, Frostbite. There we go. Um, rather than having to spend uh, a specific uh, type of die, uh, now you can spend any, uh, any side, any type, and you have an Orchid Dove. And that... You know, it's it's worth it to have multiple Orchid Doves. And if you are able to get an extra Orchid Dove, that is just... That's pretty much like the cherry on top. Um, getting the Focus 2, you deal 1 damage to a target player's Phoenixborn if they do not have any cards in their draw pile. I mean, at that point, that's like... That's late, late, late game. Uh, Elliot asks, how many battlefields do you need to want to play Orchid Dove? Um, Lulu can definitely play Orchid Dove. Uh, Lulu can, Lulu can do Orchid Dove because, you know, like being able to keep your units alive so that you can, uh, do a full bolster is... Is pretty good. Um, I've actually I faced against uh, Eric's Lulu uh, Lulu Orchid Dove deck, and you know having having those Orchid Doves become two ones is pretty threatening. Um, you don't really need. I mean, I don't know if you're gonna want to play it in Mayoni. Um, in fact, I don't know if uh, this expansion even made Mayoni. Uh, a relevant force I don't really think so I mean dispel itself kind of eats up snakes a bit um, even better than freezing blast does too so I feel like um, I feel like, depending on the type of deck that you have, I mean, if you have a deck that wants to stall out, or if you have a deck that uh, wants to uh, burn, I, you know, it's it's useful to have uh, Orchid Dove. It's nice to have Orchid Dove. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, Elliot said that this is the most intriguing card to me. I love it. And I, I agree. I mean, when I, when I saw this card, um, I, I was like, this is, this is an amazing card. Uh, peaceful melody, um, really changes the way aggro decks have to be, uh, played, you know, like aggro is all about spending all of your dice to just attack, um, and Orchid Dove just kind of steps in the way of that. Like, they actually have to... If you play an Orchid Dove after... That's actually a really good point uh, that I have to make. <clears throat> if you play an Orchid Dove, uh, or if you have an Orchid Dove out on the field, um, and the opponent doesn't have any more dice, and they have a full field of uh, unexhausted units, they can't attack. They can't. They can't attack in. They can't. They can't do anything except just you know like, just pass. And uh, that itself is really powerful. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, I'll just continue on. I'll talk about. Let me go on to. Uh, Chain of Violinist. Let's see. Hold on. I gotta bring that out. All right, so we have Enchanted Violinist. Uh, well, the errated Enchanted Violinist. Um, so it used to be that Enchanted Violinist was just a main action. And uh, Song of Sorrow said, after a player discards one or more cards from their draw pile, you may spend one basic to place one wound, uh, one wound token on a target unit. And now it requires one uh, one basic die to cast or to play, and uh, Song of Sorrow is after an opponent discards one or more cards, rather than any. Any player. So let's talk about what what changes because of uh, the nerf to Enchanted Violinist. Um, first of all, uh, a big thing that's on a lot of people's mind is the change to, or basically the uh, uh, indirect buff for Frostfang, right? Because uh, now you don't really have a very reliable way of getting rid of Frostfang. Um, you do have, you do technically have, um, Hammer Knight with its Aftershock ability, but, uh, other than that, oh, and then also, Chris, uh, Crimson Bomber, um, But other than that, there's there's no other way to effectively get rid of it. Uh, you know, like if you if they decide to go all in on that Frostfang, so Frostfang gets a pretty big buff. Uh, I feel like Protect also gets a really big buff too. Um, Protect uh, used to be played quite a bit, uh, and I think it's mainly because not a lot of people were using Enchanted Violinist to its full potential. Um, Protect is the uh, uh, nature ceremonial that uh, uh, spellboard three status tokens and remove a status token uh, if a unit would take uh, damage. And in Chain of Violinist, because it skipped the uh, the damage part of the resolution, 
just straight up place wounds and uh, protect kind of stopped um, being used. Um, now that Enchanted Violinist has been nerfed, you, you're probably going to see more protects. I mean, you know, like having uh, a Hammer Knight with six life essentially is insanely powerful. Um, having a, a bear with six life is pretty, really good too. Um, what else? Uh, it, it nerfed ceremonial a little bit. Um, because now, uh, instead of being able to, you know, like if you only have one ceremonial die left in your active pool, you could, before, you could, you know, still get back the Enchanted Violinist and prevent yourself from taking four damage from a Hammer Knight or uh, three damage from a Bear. Um, but now, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to do that. And ceremonial uh loses in a little bit in that um she's a lot more focused now uh you won't see her in very many aggressive decks anymore uh, you will see her still in, uh, you know, illusion decks uh, or mill decks or uh, um, obviously mill decks um, or uh, even, like I said before, with Leo, like Leo, Remorse, um, Leo has Glowfinch, Leo can uh, use the Glowfinch to protect the violinist from um, from dying or protect any of uh, his units from dying and then uh, when that glowfinch dies the last request gets uh, triggered and then uh, enchanted violinist can also trigger um, so in a way uh, the violinist I mean the violinist is still a pretty good card it's it's a one two for one which is what you find in a lot of uh, a lot of units. Um, you find, I mean, you know, Gilder is uh, one two for one. Um, Owl. Uh, a focus one. Uh, Butterfly monk. I mean, that's like, that's probably the best spot to be in is focus one. Um, but yeah. I mean, it's still not a bad card. It's just a lot more. It's a lot more um, uh, specific. You can't really use it in any kind of deck now. You have to use it. Uh, you have to use her in uh, specific types. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I yeah, I don't I don't like it very much just because it's too charm class. Yeah. Which is yeah. very color intensive, uh, so I'm not a fan of that. That means if you had two copies out, you have to commit four charm dice for it. So um, it's difficult to do unless you're running mono. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's just difficult to do if you're unless you're running mono. So that's why I'm not a fan of Nightshade Swallow. Death Strike is fine, but yeah, like I, like you said, it's if you're trying to be aggressive with it and attack, then they're just gonna let the phoenix more take it and if you're going to wall up with it that's your best case scenario is to just leave the the bananas there blocking and um try to get the bananas to you know make your opponent less not want to attack you it's the best thing they can do more often than not it's not the death strike it's the fact that you know it's gonna discourage attacking right oh Hello. And then the dove is awesome. I uh, I didn't know what to expect with the dove until I played with it, and it blew me away. At first I was like, one life, 
yeah, one life unit is not great. It's going to just die easily and it's not going to accomplish anything. And then I actually played with it and man, that card is awesome. Uh, one die for a 1-1, one, one, it's just meh. But that ability is great. You can you can swing all in and just leave a dove up. If your opponent has no dice, they, they can't attack you back. Which is incredibly good, like so good. And the focus one ability is really, really good because it costs you a basic die. That means nothing's going to stop you from getting this out. With the charm cost, like, okay, there's exhaustion, there's things around it. With the basic cost, like, it's, it's getting played. And the focus two ability, I think, is really cool. I mean, you're probably not going to play it very often or get to use it, but I like the idea a lot. The fact that you're like, okay, well, once I mill them, I can start dealing more damage to them quickly with this focus two ability for a basic die. Yeah. But I think this unit is amazing. I think this unit is... I know Papa Pratt said that the Shadow Spirit is going to be the, just as impactful as Bears. I think this unit is going to be... This unit is going to give Shadow Spirit a run for its money and being the most impactful unit in this expansion.